The Central Florida Christian Chamber and Triangle Media welcome you to the Builders Podcast, spotlighting Christian business leaders and their stories of faith, leadership, and success. Here's your host, Suzanne Lynn. Welcome to the Builders Podcast. Um, I'm Suzanne Lynn, and we offer these shows to you to, to help you get to know the upcoming speakers at the next Relationship Building Lunch. And the next Christian Chamber Luncheon happens on March 12th from 1130 to 1. It's at First Baptist. That's on South John Young. And we really hope that you'll not only uh, make it, but that you'll sign up early. And definitely you're going to want to see this guy. Jeremy Couch is uh, is our speaker for March, Dr. Jeremy Couch. Let me just tell you a little bit about him. He's the executive director and an assistant uh, professor of leadership for the Orlando campus of Palm Beach Atlantic University. He's passionate about helping leaders accelerate their performance in order to build healthy and thriving team cultures, which is so important. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to dive into that, Jeremy, but Mm -hmm. he produces a a leadership content podcast called Insights for Leading. It's also a blog, and that can be found at insightsforleading.com. And I wish I could say I had all that memorized, but uh, my my eyes diverted so I could see this. But Dr. Jeremy, I'm so glad that you're here. Oh, thank you, It's great to be here with you. This is, I, I can't think of many topics that are more important than creating a culture, healthy atmosphere for people to succeed because it not only affects us at work, but we take it home with us, right? Mm, Oh yeah. 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 You know, think about how much time you spend in the workplace and just think about that environment you're in and imagine if you are in an environment that when I say unhealthy, that could mean a lot of different things, but generally we're thinking of, of just the environment, the relationships, the morale, the the work mm-hmm. environment, the way you're led, um, mm-hmm. those interactions with people. And so if if those things are what I would say are unhealthy or in a worst case scenario, what we would call toxic, mm-hmm. which we don't wish on anyone, sure, you can't help but carry that with you to other areas of your life. Mm-hmm. And and so yeah, my passion is is trying to help leaders and people to um, really first start with themselves and say, mm-hmm. you know, let me work on me first. And, oh, and, that's and the hardest one. It's so easy to point out everybody oh, else's mistakes, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We always want to go, uh, we want to train others and tell right. others what they need. But um, when we start with ourselves, that's where we we can make a difference. And where we, when we change our habits and we focus on building healthy, productive, positive habits, um, now we can go out and lead others well. We can create thriving, positive, uplifting environments where people feel encouraged and nurtured and cared for. And um, let's let that type of experience now carry with them into the other areas of their life mm-hmm. as opposed to that that negative uh, experience, which is um, probably more common in work environments today than we would care to admit. Yeah. Including yeah. Christian environments. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately there, right? We yeah. are human still. And unfortunately, Christian environments are are just as susceptible to this because we bring in our our, our human uh, weakness and our um, you know, those negative tendencies and, and poor habits that result in, you know, worldly type behavior. And pride. Not, uh, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, boy, you know, you start talking pride. That's yeah. where it it's at the root of a whole lot of unhealthy behaviors. And um, so I think good news is um, we can change that. Absolutely. You know, With good control. leadership. And Absolutely. I think about the word leadership and tell me if I'm wrong. There might be someone that says, oh, no, I'm not. I don't have the, the title of a boss or manager, so I'm not in leadership. Can you yeah. kind of give us some perspective on that? Certainly. That is far too common. We um, naturally associate leadership, like you just said, with position. We Mm -hmm. think you have to have a certain position to be called a leader. Now, if you are in a certain position of leadership, by default, you you are a leader, but it's possible that you might not actually do much leading. Uh, It's possible, you know, you just occupy a position. So to the folks that are saying, hey, I'm not in a position so I'm not a leader. I say, no, leadership is influence, right? Leadership is anytime you are, as Blanchard and Hodges say in their book, uh, Lead Like Jesus. It's anytime you're 
uh, seeking to influence the thinking, behavior, or development of another person you are mm. leading. And if you were to look at it through that lens and look at your day, I guarantee you, you could find at least one other person where you were doing just that and you were exercising leadership. So changing the mindset is to get you to recognize that even if you don't occupy a position every day, you still have the opportunity to lead through your actions and the things that you are doing and the example that you're setting. Mm-hmm. Many times it's the example you're setting is, is one of the, the best ways to lead. I'm going to go out on the ledge and say, we have lots of leadership opportunities before we even leave the house. What yeah. about with our kids and our spouse and go into the, uh, the drive through for morning coffee and yeah. all these things. You're, it's a dominoes yeah. effect of your leadership, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. You're so right. As soon as you wake up and, and you've got family in the house, you're, you have the opportunity to lead right there. And mm-hmm. then, like you say, step out the door. Who are you interacting with? Mm-hmm. Who, who are, are you having, you know, these, these moments with where you, you get to um, decide, how do I treat this person? Mm-hmm. Uh, how do I carry myself as a Christian? We would say, well, let's go out and let's be light. Right. And let's, let's be positive. Let's be different. But oftentimes we're, we're rushing out the door and we're caught up in our day and the, the things that are heavy on our mind or the meeting that's upcoming or whatever. And now we're stressed out. And then there's traffic because we know in central Florida that uh, that's all around us. And so we've got these, these stressors that can take us uh, off course and, and cause us to exhibit bad leadership, right? We can, we can influence in a, in a negative way too. So it's a choice. And I say that a lot is that, you know, every day it's, it's literally like, it's a daily choice to say, am I going to, am I going to serve or, or am I going to be self-serving oh. by nature? I, I want to be self-serving, right? I'm sure, thinking about sure. me and my, my agenda, my wants. And I think, you know, naturally we are, we are selfish people, but if I can just ask myself that question every day and say, you know, am I going to serve or be self-serving? Hopefully it's getting my, my mindset, right. My focus it's interesting because as you say that, is it ultimately being a good leader getting us to the destination we we want to be at? Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's you know, that's the whole idea. Is uh, like we think that that instant, that instant, you know, lashing out or saying something yeah. sarcastic, that's getting us actually further from our self interest. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, we we are allowing those negative moments to take us off course Mm -hmm. and it's something triggers us something gets helps us or causes us to lose focus and i I think there's again there's that that side of us that's um, just exercising our human weakness and for whatever reason we um we allow that to overtake what we know we should be doing Mm -hmm. and we we react instead of maybe responding. And that oh. doesn't sound maybe on the surface, like, is there a big difference? And that's actually something even in Lead Like Jesus, which I already mentioned, because uh, there's some great content in there, but they talk about this idea of do you react or respond? You know, react is usually out of emotion. Response is 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 taking a moment to think through this, to reflect, to maybe step away and and just maybe ask a question maybe mm-hmm. really take a breath mm-hmm. uh, those things may seem small but in the moment where we are weak and we are um, uh, prone to reacting it, it can make a tremendous difference in in how we then end up handling that situation hmm. Yeah. Jeremy, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back and we're going to talk about another difference of two words that I've heard you talk about. So hang on just a second. Do you have valuable information to share? Are you looking to build a relationship between your brand and your target audience? Are you able and willing to talk about your products, services, and or industry on a regular basis? If you answered yes to these questions, then you or your organization needs a podcast. Podcasts are the new talk radio. 144 million Americans listen to podcasts, including 90 million on a monthly basis. 
Podcasts are in demand because consumers want information on demand, on the go, and in a personal, relatable way. At Triangle Media, we take care of every step of your organization's podcast. From idea creation to recording and editing through distribution, it couldn't be easier for you. We even offer white-label podcasting services for agencies who want to offer podcasting to their clients. Contact Suzanne Lynn at trianglemedia.biz to learn more and ask about video podcasting, too. Well, Jeremy, welcome back. And um, one of the things that I've heard you talk about is the difference between desire and action. Can you talk about those? Yeah, uh, we're going to be talking about habits at, at the luncheon and tying that into leadership and, and literally just about leading ourselves, right? And so every day we have to decide how are we going to lead ourselves. And I think we all desire a lot of things. We have great intentions. <laughs> if you're like me, and, and I hope I'm not alone there, but I mean, I've got a laundry list of great ideas, great mm-hmm. intentions, things I'm planning to do and where the rubber meets the road. And this isn't rocket science, but we get it wrong. So often is we're, we're often terrible at taking consistent action toward those desires. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I can want a lot of things, but then I can end up never doing anything about them. You know, I work here at, at Palm Beach Atlantic in higher ed and we, we help adult learners who want to go back and complete their degree. Well, we'll have many people come to us and they'll express their desire and they'll say they want to do this and it's important to them. And they'll list all these reasons why they want to come back and complete their degree, but they won't take the first step. Now that could be for a variety of reasons. And when I think we're the same way, you know, name the desire, the thing that you want, there's some reason you're not acting. It could be fear. It could be, um, you know, uncertainty, um, maybe it's just not as high a priority as you think it is. I yeah, mean, exactly. Lose right. weight is, seemed really yeah. like a great idea. Eight o'clock, but nine o'clock, I saw a box of donuts. You know. Well, <laughs> there you go. And I mean, that oftentimes, what it comes down to is um, is is just that we're we are acting out of emotion, mm-hmm. not out of habit, and and, and so we're we're. In other words, we're thinking more about how we feel right. a lot of times. Do I feel like going in and working out? Do I feel yeah. like making those sales calls? Yeah. You know, do I feel like going to that Christian chamber lunch where I'm going to have to meet a bunch of people and I'm an introvert? Right. You know, you you can think of all these different scenarios where we don't feel like doing something, but we know that if we do it, and we build this habit of doing it, it's going to get us closer to where we want to be ultimately. But Mm. we just let those feelings and those emotions and those things that we get inside our head oftentimes to prevent us from even taking the first step. Can you talk to me about the importance of habit? Because this applies across the board for so many parts of our life. Oh, for sure. And I have... um, I've become more and more interested in this topic over the last couple of years after reading some great books on habit. And I'm convinced that it is the key to our success. I know that really? that sounds very, you know, wow. motivational speaker like, but just think about our day and the, the things that we're doing, whether it's in our spiritual life, in our relational life, our professional, you know, our work, our business, um, our health. You, you know, you name the area yeah. of your life, just think about and then and then just inventory your habits and, and put those up against maybe what you would say your goals are in each of those areas. Mm-hmm. And when I do that, <laughs> I'm usually a little bit discouraged because I go, OK, wow. I'm saying this is important. Right. And I and I and I'm saying I want to achieve this. But my day-to-day habits, the little things, are not lining up. And so where I think we go wrong a lot of times is we feel like we have to do these remarkable things, right? right. Like go big right. or go home. I've got to, oh, I, I you know, I'm going to get in shape. Okay, that's it. I'm going to go run a marathon. Right. <laughs> have you ever run before? You know, or we just, you know, you think of the thing, but we go – um, to the the end right. degree there and and we we 
we we go too big and then now we become discouraged and so i think what's happening is we're minimizing the potential impact of small daily gains and small steps repeated though see and that's that's the key a lot of times we're after the magic formula uh, we just think this, you know, the silver bullet, it's going to get us what we need right. as opposed to just establishing daily, consistent, repeatable habits and just continuing to do them day in and day out. And then we look back three months, six months, a year, and we go, wow, look, look where we progress. came from. Yeah. 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 And, that's, and I think that's where we struggle and we can easily lose motivation you know new year's resolutions are are notorious for that i mean yeah, here we February. are February. what new year's resolution? i'll worry about next year's resolution. That's right. Right. That's right. i'll set another one and i'll break that next year and, right. and it's it's again we think um okay new year it's going to be different mm. and um I, we just think that we're we're all of a sudden we're just going to become motivated Right. And, and, oh, man, we're going to conquer the world. And no, what happens? Life hits you yeah. and you you give up on all these great intentions because you just you didn't establish a system of mm. daily repeatable habits that you get to the point where they are automatic. You know, a habit becomes a habit when it is, when it's automatic. We don't think about it and we just do it and we don't go, oh, do I feel like doing this? No, we do it. That is do it. We do it. Really, I mean, that's profound to me because when you have a habit established, you go, This is just, this is a, I can't go to sleep until it's done. It doesn't matter what our excuses are then. It's on our to do list and we feel a sense of emptiness or a void if we don't do it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and it just becomes, it becomes part of who we are. It becomes a -hmm. lifestyle change. And I think sometimes, again, we're after a quick fix and we think, oh, well, maybe I'll I'll do this new thing for a period of time. Maybe, you know, I'll do this for the next uh, few months or, mm-hmm. and then I'll get these results. And then and then, OK, well, what next? Are you going to go back to the way things were? And, and we can all think of something in our life where we probably made progress in some area, but then we reverted back because sure. we didn't make it a habit. So, so um, at the March relationship building lunch, without giving away your big secret of what you're going to talk about, are you going to be able to give a strategy for how to develop habit realistically instead of just, okay, here's my, here's my plan. Just put it on your calendar each day. <laughs> Can you help us? We need more than that. Uh, I'm going to give you some more than that. I'll okay. give you more than that. Yeah, that, um, that probably wouldn't help too much right i could probably just say everything i said and everybody would agree and then say all right good luck all right that's right you're <laughs> no. not going to follow up or anything right because i'll be in trouble yeah but you got to yeah. plan how we how you can yeah help. definitely going to give some some tips obviously our time is is fairly limited but but certainly some key takeaways that when you walk away from the lunch i i, I want you to have something actionable. Anytime I speak, it's, it's always, okay, what's your takeaway? You just didn't come to hear um, a talk. You, you say, how's this going to impact my life? What's in it for me? And that's, that's good. I, we want you to come and learn and grow and, 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 and help your business, right. And help right. your relationships and, uh, and, and all those areas. So yeah, definitely going to look at helping you build a system and put in some very actionable items to change your habits. Now, again, I'm going to give some tools, but as we've already stated, it really comes down to, are, are you willing to maybe put in some hard work? Are you willing to sacrifice some things that, um, you know, that you enjoy doing and maybe aren't necessarily healthy habits. It, it, there, there comes a point where you have to decide that you are, um, you just kind of tired of things being status quo and right. maybe um, treading water in mm. some areas. And, and so my goal is definitely to help give you a, a, a system and some key points that you can put into action right away and start working on some habit change. I'm going to sign up as soon as we're done. I got to be there. I'm excited. 
So what is some contact information? How could somebody get a hold of you? They're like, you know what? I'd really like for you to present at a club I'm part at, or would you speak at my church? Do you do any of that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I love to speak anywhere and will will gladly assist however I can if it's a topic that that is an area of, of specialty for me and and leadership and in this area of um you know, habit and, and just building uh, great leadership habits and teams and organizations and things like that are of, are of all interest to me. So That's great. yeah, they can visit, they can visit the website insightsforleading.com, find me there, or just uh, connect with me here at the university. My email address is just Jeremy underscore couch at pda.edu. Okay. Would love to, to connect with anybody that, um, that can use some assistance. Very good. Jeremy, thank you for being here again. It is March the 12th. I just want to double check myself from 1130 to 1. It's the Relationship Building Lunch with the Orlando Christian Chamber. So thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next month. We'll see you on the uh, the 12th. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank Thank you. you. This has been the Builders Podcast presented by the Central Florida Christian Chamber and produced by Triangle Media. If you're interested in having a program like this for your business, contact Suzanne Lynn at trianglemedia.biz.